moving on to the next one deamination now let's pause there before we get into deamination i just want to mention this when we ingest or when we consume excess carbohydrates our body usually takes whatever it needs and the excess is stored in our body but when it comes to proteins unfortunately or is it fortunately our bodies do not have a storage mechanism for excess proteins so when you consume more than what you need your body simply takes what it needs and the excess is eliminated it's simply excreted out now the reason for this is because our bodies don't have a storage mechanism for excess proteins so what happens when you take in excess proteins the amino acids the excess amino acids are simply eliminated from your body this is done through a process called deamination now let's discuss what happens in deamination step number one is that the amino group from the amino acids is removed pause what is the amino group what are amino acids now the building blocks of proteins are amino acids when proteins are digested they are digested to the smallest molecules possible and those are amino acids now all amino acids contain a compound called the amino group which is represented as nh2 so the first step in deamination is removal of the amino group this leads to the formation of a compound called ammonia now ammonia is very very toxic so it needs to be converted to something less toxic so ammonia undergoes a series of chemical reactions called the ornithine cycle now in this cycle what happens is that ammonia um, is reacted with carbon 4 oxide leading to the formation of urea now urea is going to be our waste product and the reason why it's preferred is because it's less toxic than ammonia so urea is then released into the bloodstream it's transported by the blood to the kidneys and it's then excreted in form of urine and there we have it deamination moving on to the next function detoxification now i know i know you've heard of this term you know you, you've had people like i'm detoxing today like what is that so detoxification refers to a process whereby the liver converts harmful substances into substances that are less harmful for elimination so you find that our body carries out a lot of chemical reactions most of these chemical reactions lead to the production of waste products that are harmful but before these waste products can be eliminated they first need to be converted to less harmful substances before elimination now in case you're wondering like huh why do we even need to carry out processes such as these the reason is because these processes are very important to our function now let me give an, an example respiration we all know how important respiration is i mean guys respiration leads to the production of energy we cannot survive without it but did you know that respiration produces a waste product called hydrogen peroxide which is very toxic so what the liver does is that it breaks down hydrogen peroxide into two harmless substances and those are water and oxygen gas so duh, detoxification so hydrogen peroxide is broken down into water and oxygen this reaction is catalyzed by an enzyme known as catalase so essentially what i'm saying is that different chemical reactions in our body lead to the production of waste and these waste are harmful most of them are actually harmful so they are converted to less harmful forms before elimination and this is done by yours truly the liver next step thermoregulation now the liver is also responsible okay it plays a role in controlling the temperature of our body now it does so through two types of reactions exothermic reactions and endothermic reactions now exothermic reactions are reactions that lead to the production of heat energy endothermic reactions on the other hand are reactions that absorb heat energy from the surrounding let me give you an example you've gone to the lab and you are maybe mixing something and suddenly when touching the test tube you find that it's become warm to the touch now that is an example of an exothermic reaction it's a reaction that is releasing heat energy to the surrounding now you've done certain chemical reactions again and on touching the test tube you feel that it's cold to the touch you know it's cool 
Now that is an endothermic reaction. It has absorbed heat energy from the surrounding and that is the reason why it has become cooler. Now the liver is also capable of carrying out these two cool reactions, exothermic reactions and endothermic reactions. So when the body temperatures are low, the liver carries out exothermic reactions. So of course these reactions produce heat energy. The heat is then distributed to different parts of the body, which of course causes the body temperature to rise back up to normal. What about when the temperatures are high, when the body temperatures are higher than normal? The liver then carries out endothermic reactions. So endothermic reactions absorb any extra energy within our body, causing the body temperature to go back down to normal. And that is thermoregulation by the liver. Now on to our last function regulation of hemoglobin so hemoglobin is a pigment that is present within red blood cells so red blood cells an interesting thing about them is that they have a lifespan of around 120 days you know roughly four months so once they reach this lifespan or close to it they are then transported to the liver to be broken down now within the red blood cells you have hemoglobin hemoglobin is a conjugated protein that means it contains a protein with something else so the protein part of hemoglobin is globin and then you have heme which contains iron so on breaking down hemoglobin forms globin and heme now globin is broken down further to form amino acids which are then just reused by the body or excreted now in the case of heme what happens to the heme is that it's further broken down to form two components bilirubin and bilirubin these are then transported to the gall bladder where they are stored as bile juice you know in bile juice now when digestion takes place bile juice is released into the small intestine bilirubin and bilirubin are going to be present within the bile juice so of course bile juice is going to be used in the digestion of fats and so on until finally it's released in the feces one fascinating fact is that the brown color of feces is actually as a result of these two substances one other thing that is formed when hemoglobin is broken down is a yellow pigment by the name of urochrome and that ladies and gentlemen brings us to the end of this function and the end of this fascinating lesson i hope you've enjoyed it and learned a lot from it see you next time